It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Welcome to High Noon with David. Here to bring you a gift, but first, this is show number 222. 222. Here to bring you a gift. The gift of boldness. To believe something. I'm talking to two of you. Those of you that are believers, and those of you that are about to become believers. I'm hunting for hungry folks. You may be getting drunk on a regular basis, doing drugs. You may be a lot of things right now. You may have cheated, may be stealing, may be in the middle of adultery. You may be in all kind of things, and I'm here to help you, not to condemn you. John 3.17 says he came not to condemn, not to condemn. So I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to help lead you into the presence of the Almighty. Getting in the presence of the Almighty is not that you quit cussing. I know a lot of preachers still cuss, me included. It's not that you don't ever have a drink of whiskey or a drink of wine or a beer or several of them. Most of the church world that I know are drunk on food. And the word says, put a knife to your throat. I ain't been to a church meeting yet where they're handing out knives to cut their throats because they're eating too much food. Now, do I condemn fat people? No. No, sir, I don't. But you shut your mouth condemning somebody having a drink of whiskey in moderation or a drink of wine or beer or several of them in moderation. I'm here as a rebel to religion. Religion has sent many a person to hell. But I'm talking about relationship with the Almighty who is welcoming you with open arms to come in and get in His presence. And see what He can do for you. What He wants to do for you. Last week I talked about how these four crazy guys took a paralyzed guy to a meeting at a home. This guy named Jesus was there, a human being. God humbled into the form of a human being. So he God. No, 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 no. He humbled himself. Go to Philippians chapter 2 and meditate on it. He humbled himself into the form of a human being. And he's having miracles and healings and power. I've seen those things happen in my ministry. I'm entering my 42nd year of ministry here pretty soon. Actually, I'm already in it. And if your church ain't winning people to Jesus, if people are not getting born again on a regular basis, if people are not receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in unknown tongues, If people are not getting healed in your church by the laying on of hands, if demons are not getting run off because you have such a powerful prayer life as a church, you need to find you another church. I don't care if the pastor is polished. I don't care if everybody there is nice as they can be. You're nicely with no power. And you're just playing religious games. Well, I don't know if I'd say that. I just did. I'm going to back up and read. This is uh, Mark chapter 2. Verse 1. Several days later, Jesus returned to Capernaum. And the news quickly spread that he was back in town. Soon there were so many people crowded inside the house to hear him that there was no more room even outside the door. While Jesus was preaching the word of God, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man. 
But when they realized they couldn't even get near him because of the crowd, they went up on top of the house and tore away the roof above Jesus' head. And when they had broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. Now, <clears throat> they had to come up with something to lower him down, or either they had some long arms, or either the roof, or either the, the roof was only six foot above Jesus' head. But what impressed Jesus, what impressed God, was their act of faith. It took faith. I mean, if I went to your house, you had somebody preaching at your house and the place was packing, I started tearing the roof off of your house and lowering a paralyzed man. You'd be thinking, I hope my insurance will cover this. Well, I don't know that they had insurance back then. But there's all kinds of obstacles, doubt and unbelief. People say, well, who, who the hell they think they are going up on, that, on my neighbor's roof and they're tearing the roof off? One time my brother was on the roof helping the Methodist pastor at Pickens Methodist Church when the church caught on fire when we were kids. He's up there helping throw Bibles out the window and hymnals and trying to save all he could. He's up on the roof and I heard another fellow tell a story about how their church caught on fire. And the pastor looked at Joseph, who was a neighbor to the church, lived in the neighborhood. He said, Joe, I've never seen you at my church before. He said, Pastor, your church never caught on fire before. Woo -hoo -hoo! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! You believers listening to me, a lot of you have been too cowardly. You're scared to speak in tongues. And some of you that do, you're scared to let it be known. You still hang around people full of doubt and unbelief. You go to meetings full of doubt and unbelief. You go to churches full of doubt and unbelief. And you're like, well, now, I just don't want to offend anybody. I say, be thou offended. Get over yourself and quit being a chicken. Start walking in the spirit. Woo-hoo! Woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo! When they had broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, when Jesus saw the extent of their faith, when Jesus saw the extent of their faith, hey, do you see the extent of anybody's faith in your church? Oh, it could be a word. I know word churches got word in the name of their church. They hardly speak in tongues anymore. It's rare. Because they backed away. That's why I take so good care of myself. I'm at the gym. I've got a personal trainer, and, and she is kicking my rear end. I'm doing chin up. Uh, yesterday morning, she had me doing chin ups, and then ten push ups, and then ball slams, and then kettlebell toss. I'm like, and then she made me run around the track, and I had to do that several times. I'm like, huh, huh. but I'm staying healthy, so I can stay around and aggravate all you religious people, and those of you that know better. I'm here to entice you, to spur you on to walking in the Spirit and quit being a little sissy baby because of your stupid image that you want to protect in your community. They already think you're a kook anyway. Go ahead and give them some evidence. 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 Is there enough evidence? And I used to saying, no it ain't. There's none at all. When they had broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith. Boy, my Bible just keeps repeating this. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are now forgiven. This offended some of the religious scholars. Some of the experts, you know, expert is a little spurred away from the house. This offended some of the religious scholars who were present, and they reasoned among themselves, who does he think he is to speak this way? This is blasphemy for sure. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus supernaturally 
perceived their thoughts and said to them, Why are you being so skeptical? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are now forgiven? Or stand up and walk? But to convince you that the Son of Man has been given authority to forgive sins, I say to this man, Stand up, pick up your stretcher and walk home. And immediately the man sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left for home. When the crowds witnessed this miracle, they were awestruck. They shouted praises to God and said, We've never seen anything like this before. Thank you, Father. You get a hold of the fact that Jesus said, I don't call you servants. I dare you to Google it and find out where it is. It's called seeking God. I ain't going to tell you where it is. He said, I call you my friend. And I found out as much beer as I drank, much whiskey as I drank, as much women as I chased, as all the things I've done in my life, I found out that, I found out that Jesus wants to be my friend. And he has been a tremendous friend to me all these years. And I started letting people know how close I was to him. And oh my God, they started getting weird on me. I, I was convinced that Pickens Baptist Church would line up on both sides of the road and go or the road and go rah rah rippy rippy. He from Pickens, Mississippi. Let's help that boy. Let's give him some money for his ministry so we can go serve Jesus for the next 42 years. And they called me an idiot. I was ridiculed. That man gone crazy. I, I was in Dixon Cash Grocery in Bone, Mississippi. It was a rainy day. And all the farmers would show up and all the help, tractor drivers and people that work for the farm. No, they was all it was packed in there that day. And I walked in, and, and of course I was in the front. There's a picture of me in the front page of the Yazoo County Herald of me carrying the cross. And of course my family, oh, he's lost his mind. He's gone. Well, Jesus, mama and brother said the same thing about him. Said he lost his mind. He gone crazy. So I fell up in there. <clears throat> and see, in Mississippi, we fell up in there. <laughs> Don't ask me how. It's just the way we talk. I walked in there with packed with people sitting around on sacks of salt and sacks of meal and sitting on the benches and everything. Of course, I, when I soon as I walked in, I knew I was the topic of discussion that was going on. So I went in there and plopped up on the counter next to the hook cheese. And several of the people in there were deacons from my church who should have should have come up to me and said, David, I'm really praying for you, man. I'm so proud of you for going all over planet earth and, and telling people about Jesus. I'm so glad you're a product of our church that you were raised in. But instead, they snickered and made fun of me behind my back. And just to be brutally frank, for years I thought they just needed a natural-born Mississippi ass-whipping. Can't believe you said that on television. Let me repeat it. In my flesh... I believed every one of them need a natural born good old Mississippi ass whipping to have been in church all that time and tell me to straighten up and fly right. Boy, you need to go win and be winning souls. And I started doing it and they ridiculed me. I don't hang around people like that. The word tells me to stay away from them. Well, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's phony as it can be. These people I just read to you about. They heard that there was healing going on. His name is Jesus. See, I was raised in a church t taught that speaking in tongues had passed away. Hope you listen to me. Speaking in tongues is of the devil. I found out it's in the Bible that you told me is God's word from cover to cover. But it's funny you get to the part about the part get to the part of the Bible that you don't particularly like and you're a chicken about. Woo! Cowards. Luke 18.1 says men, women, boys, and girls ought 
to pray always and not turn coward. That's what it says in the Greek. You ought to get your Strong's concordance, exhaustive concordance, Hebrew and Greek concordance, and look it up and study that verse. Study the Greek word. It's, I can do it in three minutes. It ain't rocket science. See, I know that ooh, people, church people get so upset, religious people go up and say, well, that ain't the way we done it. Well, shut the hell up and get out of my way. If you're too fat and lazy to get in the Word and study like I did and find out there's more to this than your dead denomination, we got so many churches today, they took the name of their denomination off the church, but they're still that way. You speak in tongues in the church, they're going to run you off. And, and I take that as a compliment. I've been run out of churches before. I've been uninvited and disinvited, and I've had to just literally get up and walk out of a church. <clears throat> One guy told me I broke every ministerial rule in the book. I said, you can take your ministerial rules and shove them up your rear end in the extra dark corner. Jesus busted all the rules because he's life. He's a rescue. He's not a religion. See, the thing about all these religions, their gods are all dead. Jesus is alive. I'm having so much much fun. You know, I'm out here. This is my second show this morning, and the light's starting to shine on me. I preach mainly on clear mornings when I got some sunshine. That's my favorite time to preach. The light's just great. Jesus loves you. Well, I, I get reports, <clears throat> people on drugs, people on pills, addicted to alcohol, and they're needing help. Well, the best help you can get, I said the best help that you can get is from word and prayer. If I can get you, I got a guy, he was on prayer this morning, he was just shouting. Just not too long ago, about four years ago, he's scared to get a job because he's scared to go back on drugs. Now the guy has a job. He's not on drugs. He's become a youth pastor. He prays with us every morning. He's on there early every morning with me. People say, well, I don't know what to pray. We'll receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak with unknown tongues. You can pray for hours in unknown tongues. I do it daily. Oh, yeah. Does that mean I'm I'm perfect? No, man, I have flesh like anybody else. I go see a movie, I eat popcorn, put the butter on it, give me a real co- I actually get two frozen Cokes because the little cup ain't big enough, so I got to give me two of them because these movies will last a long time. And some of them milk chocolate covered almonds. And I love ice cream on a stick. It's got chocolate and then caramel and then the vanilla on the inside, the magnum. Woo! That's some good ice cream. But I work my tail off. I'm moving my body. And I can eat some things that a lot of folks can't eat because they they, they so sit and steal all the time you turn into a solid. Whew. I believe in spirit, soul, and body. <clears throat> you are a spirit. You, the spirit, has a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. And you live in a body. When your body expires, it dies, you expire, you, the spirit, leaves the body. You live forever, either in heaven or hell. I don't beat you up over hell, but I'm telling you, don't be a fool and neglect so great a salvation. You say, David, they preach preachers on TV galore. Yeah, and a lot of them don't know what to do with the lost people. Not all of them, but a lot of them don't know what to do with a lost person. Jesus loves you. He cares so much about you. I had a medical doctor, somebody heard me preach in Missouri, called him in Jackson, Mississippi, and he came and met with me. Had several doctors working under him, millions of dollars coming in a year, just just tremendous. He had lost everything. He looked at me, and we were talking at the, the liberal coffee shop down here, and I asked him point blank, I said, dude, do you believe Jesus loves you just like you are right now? And he didn't hesitate. He didn't draw breath. He immediately said, no, I don't believe it. I said, that's your problem right there. You want something from God, but you want it on your terms and not his. He loves you. Once you get to know him. See, I'm not a servant of God. 
I'm a friend of God. He's my dear friend. And boy, did I have to wade through the stupid religion and all the stupid rituals that people are so hung up on. You thinking that's going to get you to heaven? You'll go to hell relying on that crap. You are saved by grace through faith and no other way. Boy, this is good preaching. Well, the other day, <clears throat> this girl named Linda Marconi, she's a former nurse. She's like a sister to me. And in prayer, she said she she spoke up and said, David, I just got the word that we're tearing the roof off in prayer. That's what we're doing. That's what prayer does. It opens the door up for people that are not seeing that the light, it's like the light is shining on my face right now from the sun coming up. Light's coming to them. That's what people need. They can't see. Oh, I, I still am getting light on, on stuff in the Bible. There's so much I don't know. But I found out that, that this Jesus loves you. And he's teaching me to look at you through his eyes instead of my eyes. I quit looking at you through the eyes of the Baptist Church. Southern, Southern Baptist Church. I quit looking at you through Presbyterian eyes and Catholic eyes and Buddhist eyes and Hindu eyes and Hare Krishna eyes and Muhammad eyes. I look at you through the eyes of Jesus. He's a rescue. He's not a religion. He's alive. And he loves you. So how do you receive this Jesus? You got two tools. <clears throat> I was, I've been messing around in carpentry since I was a young lad, 12, 13 years old. I started, got me a saw and a square and pencil and started learning and I'm not a master of any of it but I've done a lot of construction over the years built my last house mostly with my two hands and I had a nail apron I, I got boy I got prosperous and got me a leather nail apron man it's real worn I still got it today a framing the hammer that's got a waffle finish on it so when it hits the heel of that nail it won't slide off it I'll drive it right through that piece of wood got a finishing hammer I got a sledgehammer. I got all kinds of hammers. And I'm learning. But God, I, I have tools for that. Well, God's given you a tool to receive salvation. He's already done all he'll ever do for your salvation. It's your mouth and your heart. Use your mouth right now and say, Jesus is Lord. Now use your heart and say, I choose to believe. You died for me, Jesus. And God, you raised Jesus from the dead. Well, the word... The Word says, if you do that, you're born again. DavidDixon.org, come join the journey. Don't be a spectator, be a participator. Jesus loves you and He cares about you so very much. Well, I've got to run and I'm going to come back and wrap this up. But say this after me, Jesus loves me. Back again. 1 Corinthians 3.3, 3. I want to wrap up sharing this. For Paul told the church at Corinth, he said, For you are yet carnal. One translation of this verse reads, You are body ruled. In other words, their bodies through their unrenewed minds were ruling their spirits. Even though they were new creatures in Christ, they had never developed spiritually. <clears throat> I got friends and quote you, you bring up a situation, they quote you 15 scriptures about it. They have so memorized the word, but it's mental. And there's no power there. I mean, anybody can quote a scripture. But I want to see somebody lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I want to see somebody cast out demons and the demons leave. I hope you listen to me. And those same people cannot control their eating. Listen, I love to eat. Woo! Do I love to eat? I love fried chicken. That's a, that's a new state bird of Mississippi is the fried chicken. But the, the, the fruit of the Spirit that is rarely preached on is, is self-control. You know, I got people say, well, you just cause their family members or somebody cannot handle alcohol and, and use self-control with it. 
They're just against anything that mentions beer, or whiskey, or wine. Well, Jesus turned water into wine. That if you drink enough of it, you'll get drunk as a coup de bras. You'll get drunk as you can get. Fall in the flow. Well, no, I don't believe that. Well, shut up and go watch Bugs Bunny. You're an idiot. When they say you saved the best for last, I know what that means. I've been drunk a many a day on alcohol, and then I, now I get drunk on the spirit. But it's amazing that the reason <clears throat> these things are important to talk about, you say, well, I may, I'm skinny. You don't need to talk to me like that. Let me tell you something. You can help people. I believe, I believe in self-improvement big time. I believe if you're fat, get your fat friends and go start your club called the Skinnies and start walking every morning and, and hook up with us. You can get on your phone. All of you be praying with us in the morning. We start at 4.30. Hey, I want to throw this little episode in on how to partner and help this ministry out. The word partner is one who takes part with another to do something. And I know a bunch of you want to take part with me to help me do something. What are we doing? We're doing discipling and evangelism. We're doing discipling, especially through prayer, 4.30 every morning of the week, till for about an hour to an hour and a half, Monday through Friday, 11.30 to 1 p.m. We have, we have a bunch of folks praying daily. And the best way to disciple is somebody is through prayer and teaching of the Word and equipping. And another thing we're doing is evangel evangelizing just like through this show. And we're reaching people one-on-one -on -one and through meetings. And there's a lot of fruit. And we're having a whole lot of fun. I want to read you a scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind. This is a scripture. What you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. And I just don't know we're going to make it if you don't help us. I'm in my 42nd year. And uh, I ain't had to beg and I ain't had to sob for your money. This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Tell you a real quick story about a young man that came to us, started praying with us. He was scared to get a job because he'd get around the crew again and get back on drugs. He temporarily went back on drugs, came off, and he will tell you the thing that has helped him more than anything else. He prays with us daily. He became a youth pastor. The, the, the great fruit and he's been off of drugs and he'll tell you the best thing that ever helped him was daily prayer daily in the word with us and in growing with a group that loves him so that's just one of the stories some of the fruit there's many more and we'll share others thank you for helping i know you want to it's high noon with david he's gone and fallen in love with jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.